Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we're going to be looking at the Striker, a faction-specific rocket launcher for the Terran Republic that's received a lot of revisions over the past couple of years. We'll break down the statistics, compare it to available alternatives, offer up some tips to help you use the weapon more effectively, and hopefully at the end of all this, help you make a decision whether or not the Striker is worth a purchase. The T2 Striker is going to run you 1000 certs or 700 daybreak cash to unlock, and it's available for the Terran Republic's Heavy Assault class. Throughout the video, you're going to be seeing me using the Anniversary Edition, which was a part of a bundle celebrating the first year of Planicide 2. Basically, it's just got some gold trim on it, but it's functionally the same as the standard launcher. To get the too long didn't watch right out of the way up front, the T2 Striker is a short-range anti-air deterrent with limited effectiveness versus ground vehicles as well. The Coyote-style lock-on mechanics allow the weapon to be easily fired from the hip when enemies stray too close, but the lower damage output dampens the striker's killing potential outside of a group. Now the main draw of this weapon is that it has proximity-based lock-on mechanics. That's what I've been referring to as Coyote lock-ons. It fires dumbfire rockets that will home in on enemy aircraft if they're within 20 meters of it. The meter range is based on the vehicle's origin and not its hitbox, meaning that the actual size of the target doesn't matter when it comes to the lock-on mechanics. Instead, imagine a sphere of 40 meters in diameter emanating from the very center of the vehicle. If a striker rocket passes anywhere within that bubble, it'll lock onto the target, regardless of how big the vehicle actually is. These lock-on mechanics don't snap to allied vehicles, and they will not snap to vehicles who have used flares recently. When a striker does enter that 40 meter envelope, the player will receive a very brief lock-on warning, and then it takes damage. The rocket's adjustment happens quickly, the rocket turns sharply, but it can still miss enemies, as the rockets don't do 180 degree turns. The striker does not lock onto ground vehicles, but the dumb fire aspect still gives it the opportunity to deal some damage against those types of targets. Main battle tanks and lightnings take very little damage from the striker, but Sunderers, Flash ATVs, and Harassers take a considerable amount of damage, provided you can hit them. The striker has a magazine size of 6 with 24 in reserve, and given the weapon's damage output, accuracy, rate of fire, which we'll talk about in a bit, plan on running out of ammo really quickly. If you're looking for sustainability, you'll basically be chained to an engineer's ammo pack, but a max rank munitions pouch will bump your total number of rounds in reserve from 24 to 48, so double what you had before. The weapon reloads in 3.4 seconds short and 4 seconds long, and because of that, keeping the last round in the chamber isn't the worst option, but that usually won't happen because of your limited window to push out as much damage as possible. The striker's projectile velocity is 220 meters per second, which is pretty fast compared to other dumb fires, and there isn't a whole lot of drop on the projectiles either, which makes it a little bit easier to land shots on ground vehicles, not to mention the airborne ones. I've listed on screen the aim down sights cone of fire in the common movement states, and one thing worth keeping in mind if you just break this down is that regardless of whether you're hip firing or aiming down sights, the cone of fire bloom is the same amount so your desired movement state will depend on how close your target is. For example, if your target is pretty close, you can just fire it from the hip with no problems thanks to the coyote lock-on mechanics. But if you're firing at a ground target or maybe firing at an aerial target that's much further away, you want to aim down sights, stay still, or maybe aim down sights and crouch, the bloom itself is pretty small, but the starting cone of fire that you choose will be the big determinant for how many shots you can possibly land on a target without easing up on the trigger. Every other launcher in the game is pretty confining when it comes to movement, is basically aim down sights or nothing at all, hip fire isn't a legitimate option. But due to the coyote lock on mechanics, it's a little bit different with the striker. And this helps you avoid taking damage or avoid getting picked off by snipers and what have you. Helpful trait to have. Ironically, the exposure time is still longer than other launchers, which is a bad thing, but again, the mobility is pretty nice to have. Between the mobility and the lock-on mechanics, there are a couple of fun things that you can do with the striker. When you're on a jump pad and you're jumping back and forth from a biolab, you can consistently land shots on targets as they pass by. It's not overwhelmingly useful, but it is still pretty entertaining. When riding in the Valkyrie, they're a lot of fun because you can have a handful of people throwing out rockets much more easily than you could if you had an Annihilator or some other anti-air lock-on. It'll turn the Valkyrie into a pretty obnoxious anti-air platform, which is pretty cool, but you'll also be lacking engineer repairs in the process. That said, we should talk about the most make-or-break statistic of the Striker, which is unfortunately the damage output. 
The Striker deals 200 direct damage and 50 indirect damage per rocket. The indirect damage is 50 out to 2 meters, and then tapers off to 1 damage over 3 meters. Now keep in mind that these damage values are all against infantry, as vehicles and max units have different resistance values that alter how much they receive. It also fires at 150 rounds per minute, or 2.5 rounds per second, meaning that the total exposure time of dropping 6 rockets is 2.4 seconds, which is, again, a bad thing. As you can probably tell, you need a lot of shots to kill most targets, and this is by design. The Striker, just like the Phoenix, just like the Lancer, is meant to be used in groups, because they have utility that gives them function beyond traditional launchers. If there were no drop in damage output, they'd be flat out better alternatives to other launchers in the game. The Phoenix has nice damage per hit, but it requires you to guide the rocket, which takes time and in turn lowers the damage per second over longer distances. The Lancer has lower damage output in general, but it can be used at incredible range with pinpoint accuracy. And the Striker also has lower damage output, but has lock-on mechanics that don't trigger lock-on warnings until it's too late. The sad truth is that a lot of the game centers around burst damage, which is why it's difficult to do much by yourself with a launcher that does less damage per hit. When people realize they're taking damage or when they realize they're being locked onto, they tend to run away. It takes two magazines to drop an ESF, so if you have someone standing next to you with a striker, you can both mag dump before it targets, hey, I'm taking damage, I should probably leave, reflexes kick in, and a handful of people can set up an area of denial in the same way that burster maxes can. Realistically though, targets further out are too hard to hit unless they're standing still or coming straight toward you. When you go after moving targets, it's common to just pepper an area with six rockets and only land maybe one. That's basically worthless. So there are really three situations where the striker is actually useful. That's A, when enemy air vehicles are really close to you, so you're talking uh, air zergs doing drive-bys over a base, or people being annoying with their anti-infantry nose guns. B, they're good when there isn't enough time to get a lock. So if there's a lot of cover, like on Hassan, strikers will actually let you do some damage. And lastly, C, used in groups, they're actually pretty good. And this again comes down to burst damage. There are other benefits, like being able to hit targets behind cover, and the flexibility of having a larger magazine, but hitting targets behind cover isn't a situation that you pull the rocket launcher for, that's just an opportunity that you capitalize on. And the flexibility of a larger magazine size can mostly be compensated for by player skill. The downsides, however, come in the form of what else you have access to. If you're really good with the default dumbfire launcher, you can get an ESF to a couple of hits away from death, with just a single shot, not to mention it's also more satisfying. And depending on the situation, it can also help you set up an area of denial in the same way, since pilots are generally afraid of taking that big damage that is associated with dumb fires. It doesn't do literal damage unless you actually hit something, but there is a psychological factor there. When it comes to dealing with quick moving or heavily armored ground vehicles, the striker is basically useless. Good against thunderers and vehicles whose drivers are AFK, but that's about it. Against max units, it's not horrible, so long as they aren't shooting at you, but if they are, then the exposure time to actually launch, let alone aim six shots, can be detrimental to your health. Again, dumb fires kind of went out here. And finally, at longer ranges, without a lot of cover, you can always snag a lock-on launcher and push out more damage. What the striker excels at are in those specific situations, which are surprisingly common, but even within those situations, they're not irreplaceable. The Phoenix I consider irreplaceable because it can do things that no other weapon can do. The Lancer, same thing, does things that no other weapon can do. Perhaps it's just the fact that the Striker is an anti-air weapon instead of an anti-vehicle weapon, but there's a lot of overlap with the weapon in terms of what it's capable of. If the Striker could lock onto ground vehicles, it might have more of a niche. Or if you had an alternate fire mode that just bursted down all the shots at once, it also might have more of a niche or if you could turn striker rounds into floating anti-air mines with longer coyote range, it might have more of a niche. But right now, it's still as meh as it used to be. It's just more manageable post-buff. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any thoughts on the striker, go ahead, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.